What's up guys? So I used my A6300 to shoot that little sequence you just watched, but most importantly, I also used this. Now this is the very, very, this is the variable ND from Gobi. It's their ND8 to 128, and this thing is a beast. But today we're gonna be going over how ND filters can elevate your photography, your videos, and your time lapses. And at the end I'll be reviewing this filter specifically. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what an ND filter is, the classic reference for them is that it's essentially a sunglass for your camera. So it lets in less light, it makes it darker so that you can achieve more desirable settings on a bright sunny day. Or even on an overcast day, I find that I'm using this thing all the time. But with variable NDs, I also like to consider it as like a fourth setting. Cause now you have this much light to play with. Sorry. You can play with all that light being let in and then you can also change your aperture, ISO, and obviously your shutter speed. All right, so starting with video, there's two main pros of it using an ND for video. One is slower shutter speed and two is aperture. Starting with the slower shutter speed, there's this general rule that whatever your frame rate is, you wanna double that for your shutter speed. So right now I'm filming in 24 frames per second, which means my shutter speed is one and a 50th. The reason for that is the motion blur. So if you watch my hand shaking like this right now, now look at your hand and shake it and look at it. And you'll see how you'll see the same motion blur. And it's just the most cinematic most natural looking to the human eye. Except on a bright and sunny day, there's no way I could shoot 24 frames per second because one and a 50th shutter speed is just way too bright for a sunny day. Even if I'm maxing out my aperture and my ISO is at 100. Yeah, then as soon as I pop this on, I can even get, I can slow down my shutter speed to one and a 50th and then I'm even bringing down my aperture to way more desirable numbers like shooting at five or like f9 on a bright and sunny day with like a slow shutter speed all right so my all-time favorite thing about this nd is definitely hitting those low aperture shots on bright sunny days even on cloudy days i'm finding i'm popping on that nd all the time opening up my aperture all the way down to 1.4 1.7 and the bokeh shots always look amazing. I honestly never thought I could before getting this, but I can open up my camera all the way down to 1.4 on a sunny day and still expose it properly. All right, so next up, we're gonna be talking about time lapses and everything I say about time lapses, this also applies to hyperlapses as, as well. I just didn't shoot any hyperlapses for this video. So ND filters can let you slow down your shutter speed a lot for time lapses, which is super helpful because it lets more motion into every single frame. And then when you watch the time lapse after, everything just looks connected more, everything, the more motion blur basically makes it look like a faster time lapse. So everything will boom, boom, boom. For example, check out this first time lapse with a fast shutter speed and then see how everything kind of looks choppy. You see every single indiv individual frame now check out this time lapse with a slower shutter speed and everything goes foom, foom, foom. Everything flows together so much better. And also keep in mind what is gonna look better with more motion blur. So in my opinion, if you're shooting time lapses of cars at night with streaking lights, the slower the shutter speed, it's gonna connect to, together way better. Um, water or waterfalls look super good with slow shutter speeds. So keep in mind what you're shooting and if you want that ND on there for it. All right, so lastly, we're gonna be talking about photography. So just like video, you have two main pros where you can slow down your shutter speed and you can also slow down or open up your aperture. So the aperture is super awesome, but you can kind of already achieve that without an ND, but normally you'd have to just crank your shutter speed to be super fast. Um, so I'm going to be talking more about the shutter speed side of things. So the reason NDs are awesome for photos are because you can take long exposure photos during the day. So 
With a slow shutter speed, think about what you want to shoot. I personally think water looks really cool. Waterfalls, creeks, rivers, lakes, anything like that, ocean. Um, it just kind of gives it this mystic look of you don't know what actually happened to the water because it's kind of blurry. Um, and then other really cool things are like sports car shots where the if you shoot the sports car in the whole black, the whole background is motion blurry. Um, makes the car look like it's going really fast. Same with athletes, sports, things like that. When you add the motion blur, it adds like an intense feel to it. So think about what you want to shoot because not everything needs a slow shutter speed. Right. So last up, we're going to be talking about this ND specifically. So overall, Gobi is a really sweet company. They care a lot about the environment and with the purchase of every one of their products, they plant five trees, which is super, super cool, especially in today's day and age. What you get with the ND when you buy it, you get a little microfiber towel inspired by nature, opens up, which is super nice. I actually found since I got this, I'm using it all the time. And then also you get a little carrying case, Gobi. I just keep my ND in there. It's padded on the inside, close it up, and there you go, added to your camera bag. Super cool. Okay. Starting with the build quality, this thing is super rugged. It's all metal. It feels super good in your hand. When you spin it to change it, it's just super smooth. It's kind of stiff to change it, which is good because you don't want it to get bumped on your camera or anything like that while you're filming. And then also with this ND, it tells you just with some dots, you have ND8, and then it goes all the way over to ND128, which is super helpful just for when it's on your camera, you can't actually see how dark it is just by looking at it. So with every variable ND filter, they all have two polarizing filters that go together. When you put them together, something that is inevitable is vignetting. With each variable ND, it's just about how bad that vignetting is and it has to do with the quality of the glass. So with this specific ND, I found vignetting is to a very minimal. The only times I really notice it is when there's already a natural vignette to the sky. And honestly, I just find it as a cool effect, if anything, because the pros of using this with your camera outweigh the tiny little bit of vignetting you're gonna get. When it comes to cons, I literally can't think of any. This thing has been super awesome. I guess I can't really compare it to any other ND filters because it is my first one, except I would say the one con is that maybe you do have another piece of gear in your camera bag now, just something else to think about which is, can kind of be a lot sometimes when you're just adding things all the time. But overall, this thing has been super awesome. I've loved every photo, every video I've ever taken with it. And I can honestly say, for the price point you can buy this ND for, there's not a better variable ND on the market right now. All right guys, well thank you so much for tuning in to this review. If you like more, or if you would like more of these videos from me, just let me know. And other than that, have a freaking sweet day. <laughs> you hit it on the roof, dog.